Welcome into Cleveland Browns Daily. Nathan Zagura, Gibbe from the Cross Country Mortgage Campus in Berea. And Gibbe, I feel like we're very lucky. We seem to be in one of the few spots right now. We're, we're functioning fully here at the CCM campus. The, the lights Some lights are out in various in places. Out. They're doing some work here, upgrading our internet, upgrading uh, some of the elect- electrical. But we're on. We're with you. I think we're on. Nick, are we on? We are on. All right. We're on, baby. That's right. <laughs> we certainly are. <laughs> what is the, I don't know what's going on. Like It's wild. I'm looking I, I out into like the darkness. I feel like we're to power down all this gear every night now because I don't know what they're doing in this no, building. No, no. Don't our, worry. Don't worry. We're safe. You're safe, you baby. You're I don't safe. know. I'm not feeling it. I'm feeling all right. I, I, I was pulling out the backup gear at 12.58 trying to figure out how the hell we were going to do a show today. And then, and then your, your tech guy... Zagura said. I did not see that coming this week either. I Between see. you carrying the BPA last week. That's right. You're welcome. Thank you. I, Thank I, you. I shouted Thank you out. You. By the Thank way, you. if you have not heard the BPA, do it. You should probably go check it out. Zagura's one on one with Chad O'Shea. 20 minutes of gold on the new wide receivers in that wide receiver room and what that room looks like overall. And it's really Chad O'Shea carried the BPA. I just asked him a few questions, but he is, as you know, great friend of the program. I, he's a great – you and him. Somebody we love. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a fine man, excellent football coach, a guy who knows a lot about offense, that position in general, all of it. He is just a, a real asset, I believe, to our organization. I've said that many times. and uh, So, yeah, that's definitely worth checking out. I, I even plugged it yesterday for you, Gibby. I plugged it yesterday on the show because, you know, when I'm a part of the BPA – it's, and I like the way that I did it this time. This is more what I like to do. It's like t- t- it's the BPA featuring Nathan Zagura as opposed to when, like, I just come in and it's like all of a sudden it's like I'm always a part of the BPA. No, no, no. This was like we're going to go to a separate room. We're going to go to a separate thing here. We're going to get 20 minutes of, of greatness thanks to Chad O'Shea, and we're going to do that. I really enjoyed that. I'll do that for you anytime. I love to interview people. It's probably one of my favorite things, uh, parts of the job. You get to connect with a human being. You get to – get into a dialogue, have stories come out. I love all that. So I'm, uh, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed that one, Gibbe. So thank you for that opportunity. A pleasure, Yeah, as always. It's well, Tuesday. Sun's it out. Is. You hate ice cream trucks. So, yeah, we'll talk about that right now. So <laughs> I don't hate ice cream trucks. That's a, that's a, that, what an awful thing to say. It's the show behind the show. I, I don't but, know based on your, but, your comments. Okay. So yesterday, it was obviously it was beautiful out. I, uh, after work, I was able to, uh, you know, I got a workout, a workout in, and then was able to go play a couple holes of golf. I will say this when I was like in high school and even in college, when I would have with you, when I was on the, the golf team at Emory, I was fine playing golf by myself. Like I would go out and I'd play and I'd enjoy it and all of that. But I, I got to tell you at this point, like I have no interest in it. I played two holes. And it just like I try to create in my mind like the pressure of actually playing in a match with other people. Or what I, I can't do it. I'm not a good solo golfer. I have become. I love it. I, I, I don't. I, I need. I, got I need the some tunes action. going. I got the speaker out. You know, I was out in Florida a month ago. I just had. I you got the speaker out. The wind is blowing through your dome because there's no hair there. That's right. And you're just you're living your best life. It you got fine. some beers out there. It's like you start off with one ball, then you end up with like playing three on the hole. Well, I always do. Yeah. I do a, a tailor made TP five X versus a Titleist Pro V one uh, X. So that's like the match. So I, I do the match for it with you know the ball versus the ball. See which one's going. For, try to you know ascertain things like that as I try to hone in. But yeah, then like. If I hit one that I hit, you know, it's on the right side of the green, but I was trying to hit, I'll, I'll drop it. And then the next thing you know, I got eight balls on the green. I'm putting from all over the place. I'm chipping. It's And it's fun. It turns into kind of like a practice session. So that part is okay. But, like, the notion that I would go play one ball for 18 holes and, like, play a round of golf by myself, can't do it. Can't do it. So, anyway, so I got to do that. And then I came home, picked up some – we did some – grilled some pork chops, had a little corn. Nice. Uh, barbecue pork chops, some corn, and some uh, grilled asparagus that I seasoned with a uh, – more of like a barbecue rub, like a smoky and sp- sweet rub. I made the asparagus. They really just blended it nicely, so that was good. But as Kayla and I were sitting, I missed the sweet Miss Kay. As we were sitting out on we got the chill. We pulled out all the summer furniture for uh, over the weekend. So we were on our uh, kind of like a day bed that we have out there on our, on our uh, balcony, and, and we're reading, and all of a sudden you start to hear like, 
Maybe a little slower than that. And I'm like, oh, my God, is that an ice cream truck? Yeah, you're darn right it is. The sounds of summer. So we're starting to hear the ice cream truck come around. And that's a business that, you know, you wonder did that, how the ice cream truck industry do during COVID. I'd imagine not well, but it was a tough time for the ice cream truck industry. But they, so they're playing like the, the concept, right, is that a van, in this case it was an ice cream van, or one of those old school ice cream trucks. I took one of those to a rock concert when I worked in Illinois. I borrowed an ice cream did. truck for the evening and, and we I, went to go see like Warrant. I think that that's gr- and and that to me is great. I love it. I think that's fantastic for you, and I bet you had a great time. Was there ice cream in the truck? Were the freezers active? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, need a little post concert snack. All right. I took out most of it because I knew some of it would go bad eventually. But so the ice cream truck, we can hear it, and you know, then they come in. They drive very slowly as they're hoping that their sounds, their song. Is like a Pied Piper, and and it, it you know lures you out of your home. Would it would for me to come down and get some ice cream. And so, I was just thinking, like as a kid, when I heard the ice cream truck, like I was fired up. I was like, let me go get some of that ice cream. Now there would be times when not Pedro would say, eh, not today. Deny me the funds, which in looking back on it, it feels egregious that he would rob me of such joy. But in reality, it's just the whole thing is just a little odd. There's a Curb Your Enthusiasm about Mr. Softy and, and that, that music would had an impact on, on LD that lingered well into his adulthood. It's just kind of a crazy concept when, I, when we think about it, to me. What's crazy about it? It's ice cream. Because you got, you got somebody that you, nobody knows driving around the neighborhood, playing a song that's supposed to lure kids out of their houses – in exchange for a, a cold treat. It is, it is a business. Like the, the guy's selling ice cream. He is. He's slinging ice I, cream. I'd be going outside. I'd go get some. I, it, that doesn't happen in my neighborhood. But do, I'm just saying the, just the idea, right? The idea that as a society in the year 2022 – like, I get it in, like, the 50s, but now there's, like, ice cream stores. Mitchell's here. There's uh, uh, graders there. There's ice cream places everywhere. You go into any grocery. You can get any novelty. Any t- you want bomb pops. You want, you want drumsticks. You want poppies from Trader Joe's, which I love. They're everywhere. They're readily available. People have ample size freezers to stock all these things. So I just think that it's a little bit of a tough sell for the ice cream guy, right? I mean, you're, you're counting on... The kids not having any ice cream at home now. How about you support the local mom and pop? But do I know that they're local? Don't know. We don't know. And again, my whole thing is like, if you said to me, just take the the fact that there's ice cream out of it, okay? That there was just the concept, right? The concept is somebody that you don't know is going to drive through your neighborhood, playing songs that are meant to attract. <laughs> Have kids run out of their homes to their vehicle. Or adults. Don't shortchange the adult Or factor. I know that I, you would do I it. Would, I would run after the truck. You would do it as an adult? Absolutely. So, like. Maybe it's just your neighborhood. Maybe it's. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's sold it. It's not. Why, why you got to bring that in? It's not well, about that. I, it's about number one. Number one. We're just getting out of. Uh, and and the still COVID's right around. Walden. Number two is that, like. And it's probably partially because we've become this, like, unfortunately, we've had to become somewhat of a cynical world, right? In the old days, kids could go play outside. You could go to the local park and play, and you didn't worry about things. But we know that, unfortunately, awful things have happened. So the notion that this is still an industry that's predicated upon driving through town, playing music that's going to attract people to run out of their houses to your vehicle, it just seems a little crazy to me. That's all. I I don't. I, I, You're so whatever. innocent. Like they're, so they are bringing the ice cream to you. I don't even have to leave my house. The truck, the magic ice cream truck, is bringing me ice cream. My buddy Janko, when I was four or five, my dad told me it was the music truck. We would go out and listen to the music, blissfully unaware that they had ice cream. When I found out, I was upset to say the least. <laughs> See, 
I'm just saying. I think it's a little bit of a crazy thing. I'm not against it. I'm pro ice cream truck. I, I don't get know. It. I don't think. I don't know why you wouldn't have like helped out the the common man. I would. I am. I love local businesses. More than happy to help out the common man. Some people think that I'm crazy. They, our guy out in Arizona, he says this is my worst take ever. It's not even a take. It's not even to say that I have not spent many a dollar at an ice cream truck. I have. I'm just saying if we take a step back and we think of like the whole concept and think of like all the things that could go right or all the things that could go wrong from this scenario, it feels like there's there's a lot more that could go wrong that could go right. Like what what can go wrong? I don't know. Just seems like a little bit of a crazy yeah. concept. All right. That's all I'm saying. You, you want to go down that road? I'll I'll challenge that. No, you never know what like you never know what's in the ice cream. Who knows? I go to I go to my local ice cream store. I support them. I got no problem with that. None whatsoever. And I'm not as much and I would say as a kid, I was much more of a what do you call it? Like an ice pop? Is that what they would be called? Like I was yes. much more of like a a pop a popsicle guy. But as an adult, I'm much more of a of a ice cream guy. Now it's rare, but like if you give me a black raspberry chocolate chip, that's a real tough one to beat. You give me uh, Jenny's, another another one, a local one in Sugar and Falls, although I don't know if it's like a national chain. They're doing pretty well. I uh, They have a, a banana, like cream, bourbon banana cream pie one that is pretty outstanding. That's a, gr- that's a real treat. Oh, for yeah, and, and 100%. I, I think everybody's got their ice cream. But, like, on occasion, all of a sudden the ice cream truck pops up. So what are you going for? What is, ice cream, you hear the music, and they're like, come, Gibby, come on. Come on out and get ice cream. You can't go wrong with a little drumstick action. A drumstick. So do you keep drumsticks in your house, though? No. No. Why not? Yeah, Uh, because I would eat them. You got to get the ones. I would be bigger than I already am. At Trader Joe's, they have their, like, it's like a mini bite-sized drumstick that you can get, like, a couple bites out. There are a variety of flavors. I think they're 40 calories per pop. Delightful. You get a little cone I mean, and everything. I, it's a real I, treat. I, I mean, we have Mitchell's. Like yes. periodically, we'll we'll have ice cream in our house. We just don't have it all the time because it would just it would it would be gone. It would be here today, gone tomorrow. Moderation doesn't exist. So you're saying for me, what you that. like about the ice cream truck more than anything else is the fact that it only comes around once in a while. Yes, it's like a it's like a special little deal. Like, hey, okay. all right, sweet, I'm in. I'm in. How do you not want an ice cream? Okay, it's hot. It's Did a, you like it's the, a warm day yesterday? Were you ever? Degrees, beautiful day. I could see you as a guy who went through like who really plowed those like SpongeBob ones where no. it's like a weird shaped pop never. with gummy never. gumball eyes. Nope, never. <laughs> ice cream sandwich for the long for, for just about ever growing up. Ice cream sandwich was ice like, cream sandwich. Yeah, with like just like a a just chocolate, the chocolate cookie and, and the, vanilla. Yep. I, no. I would go with a cookie on occasion. There you go. Okay. I go with that. Right. I go with a drumstick. That's that's pretty much it. I don't go with the strawberry. You know, they had the strawberry inside with like the crumbs on the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. See, right yeah. there. No. What's Big Drew think about this? What does he think of? Where does he stand on ice cream trucks? A, l- a little bit weird. Are they a little weird? Strawberry one for the win, he says. Oh wow! Would you go if the ice cream truck rolled down your street? You're on your you're on your porch. You're on your deck, overlooking your estate. And the ice cream truck rolls by. You are you are you going out? You gonna grab one? Probably not. Probably not. That's right. I don't know why you're not. I had ice cream. But do you think Drew? All I was saying earlier is I love ice cream. I was a big ice cream truck guy as a kid for sure. But as an adult. It's still the whole notion of it that you have someone driving in a big truck or van playing music that is designed to lure people out of their homes to their vehicle. It, it seems a little crazy to me. That's all. I, I, I love these. Z's worst take ever. Stop spreading irrational fears. <laughs> Z's letting his new job get to his head already. Sad. <laughs> That's from Darren Miller. Deron, what does this have Darren? to do with my job? I'm just saying. I don't know. I, Stop spreading <laughs> irrational fears. <laughs> I, I'm just saying as a concept, and again, I'm I'm for. I'm just saying as a con- it's just an odd concept. I think if we all take a step back and say, all right, we're gonna let some stranger drive through our neighborhood, play music that is designed to make kids run out of our homes to that stranger's vehicle. I think we'd say, wait a second, are we sure this is all right? That's all. What do, you, do you agree with that, Drew?
Right. And it, right, right. I mean, they, it, he's talking they about have these, the food licenses. He's talking they, about they the have to FDA. have some kind of license to be able to sell the ice cream. Listen, I'm a food truck guy. Okay, I love going to a good food truck and eating it. So, like, I get the concept of getting food, or in this case, ice cream, out of a truck. I'll tell you what. You know what would make me happy? If you had a, a taco truck driving through the neighborhood playing some music says, hey, I got tacos here. I'm coming out. You got any Al Pastor? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I, By the way, I used to get a Chaco I, Taco. I, don't, I, don't I wasn't afraid of Choco a Chaco Taco. taco. That, see, that's a good one. Chaco Taco is oh, a great one. What if that truck had had Chaco Tacos last night? You missed out on an experience. You know what? It the, was a Monday night. You missed out. The next time, the next time he comes through the neighborhood, I'm going to go. I'm going to not only go get an ice cream from him. I'm going to I'm going to interview him and I'm going to report back to you <laughs> about whatever. By the way, Andrew Pierce says Trader Joe's hold the cone are incredible. Yep, exactly. Kip uh, Kip Rosen Z, do you think food trucks are odd or no because they don't play music and drive through your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, they don't do that. <laughs> they don't do that. So, yeah, I don't think it's weird. <laughs> How many times have you seen on the local or national news have you seen evil ice cream man doing the fairy things? I think that I'm partially traumatized, and I'll be honest with you. If you guys remember the classic, I think it's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. There's, like, that n- nasty guy who comes and, like, kidnaps the children. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you can't. I, <laughs> you know what? You bring your ice cream trucks to the west side of town. Oh, Come man. on over. We'll welcome you with open arms. Yeah. I'm not sure it's for the east side. Thank you, Darren Miller. He's right. He understands. I grew up in rural Montana. I don't have, you know, a lot of things. Chris, ha- see, Chris Hanning says this on a 95-degree day in Florida, May 1997. Amazing. Yeah, a bomb pop. Those are the ones with the red, white, and blues. Yeah, That was always, always a treat. I'm not against popsicles or ice cream or novelties at all. I'm for them. I think it's a lot. That's okay. Mark F., any Browns news? No, Mark, there's not. <laughs> there is no Browns news. We are Rookie three days away from Friday. Yeah, but you're going to get a great treat today because Poizel is making his CBD debut. Anthony, Anthony Poizel, Brown staff writer. He's going to be in studio at 1.30. 2 o'clock, buckle up. We're going to take calls again. The girl wants more. I love calls. I love talking to the people. 2.30, Jake Burns from the Orange and Brown Report and the Orange and Brown Film Breakdown is going to join us and talk about some things. When we come back, though, we'll talk about Tom Brady and the fact that he could own Every ice cream truck in the world, if you wanted to, after what he's going to be paid. He already has a job. Well, he still has a job. He's got his next job already lined up with a contract, which is incredible. Kudos to him. The NFL has announced another game as well. So all of that coming your way here on Cleveland Browns Daily. Zagura and Gibbe, 850 ESPN Cleveland. You're down.
You're up. Browns fan Sugardale sponsoring a grand opening event at the newest Meyer location. Visit the Brunswick store this Friday, May the 13th for samples and giveaways and special appearances by Browns alumni and chomps for store location and more details. Visit Sugardale.com slash events. Brian McKinney says, tell Z to stop killing the vibe sign magicians. A huge magic guy. Huge magic guy. Love magic. Can't get enough of it. I'm fascinated by it. I'll try to watch what I'm not supposed to be watching. Still never figured out. I couldn't love magic anymore. If you're a magician who can bring it, card tricks, love it. I'm into all of that. You like magicians, Gibbe? I love David Copperfield growing up. Oh, no. Yeah, nice illusionist. I yeah. wanted to see David Copperfield growing up. Never got the chance. Sad. Sad. Indeed, it is sad. Yeah, I love magic. Absolutely. I had a little magic kit. I would do, like, little shows for the neighborhood. I was the entertainer even back then. Of course you were. You're the, you the mayor of your neighborhood. There's no doubt. All right, so I mentioned Tom Brady earlier, some of the news coming out of the National Football League. And guess what? Wouldn't you know? Tom Brady already has his post-career gig figured out, and the contract is already signed. Fox announced this morning that when Tom Brady hangs it up, he'll become Fox's lead NFL analyst. He has signed a contract for 10 years worth $375 million. That's $37.5 million a year. That is more than the monster deals that were just signed by Joe Buck and Troy Aikman combined. combined. I mean, wow. I look at that and I go, I hope you're as good on the microphone as you are playing football. Because if not, that is an expensive mistake. First of all, he is going to be. I mean, the guy's hilarious. Did you see that thing he just did with Justin Bieber? Absolutely. Tell the truth. The guy's he's hysterical. But th again, that doesn't mean that you can commentate on football. I yes, think, you played it. I think he's and you be are just the fine. best at it. I think he's gonna be just fine. Here's something. If I wonder if people know this, so I'll give a. We'll do a little guess the stats with you, Gibbe. All right. I look forward to bombing it. Tom Brady has played. 22 NFL seasons. 22 NFL seasons. In how many of those seasons has he made more than $37.5 million in a season? How many times has Tom Brady, as the greatest quarterback ever, made more than $37.5 million in a football season? Two. The answer is one, and it was just last year, thirty-nine point four million that year. Okay? Yeah, how he many always years? Took the discount. How many years? I'm pretty good. That was pretty. That good. That was very good. Very good. He'll make thirty this year. In how many years in his NFL career, twenty-two seasons, did Tom Brady make more than twenty million dollars in a season? I would say at least eight years. The answer is three. It will become four, really? four this year. This will be his fourth. $23 million is last year with the Patriots. $28 million is first year with the Bucs. $39 million second year with the Bucs. And $30 million this year. So he is going to make significantly more money. And, in fact, in 22 NFL seasons, his total cash that he has made is about $292 million. He will make 375 in 10 years doing commentary, not getting hit. Now, he won't get the joy or the competitive spirit that he loves about playing the game. But that is amazing. Uh, it, it's one thing to have a job lined up when you're done playing. It's another to – I mean, wh wh hold on. What's his net worth already? Oh, it's got to be – I mean, he's done very well. Yeah, between him and his wife, by the way. Let's see. Tom Brady's reported net worth is $250 million. Okay. His new deal is about to <laughs> double that. and More then than some. double it. Yeah. I mean, between him and his wife, I mean, they could go buy an NFL football team probably. They could make a run at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this is just an incredible thing to have this lined up already. That's a lot. Fox is, Fox is making a gamble. 
So it, it feels like there's – don't you think implied in this is that this is his last season? It, it goes back to this retirement thing that went down in early February becoming even more weird. Because yeah. if this was already lined up then, and that's why Fox – it makes sense then why Fox would let everybody go on their, broad, on their A broadcast team because they already knew it was happening. Like, it, it feels that way. I think you're exactly right about that. That's one part of it. Number two, it feels like there's got to be some. There's got to be some agreement that this is happening next year. Now he obviously is has no problem saying, "Yeah, I made that agreement, but I changed my mind." I mean, he's he's done that already. Yeah, but the, just the way that all went down, that it got leaked, and then he was retired. Then he wasn't retired. Then he changed his mind. He's back. Is he back just for one year? What's going on? Then Bruce Arians is out, and I, you will still find a hard time trying to convince me that there wasn't something behind that. Yep. And it, and now he's got this got this mega nice deal lined from a up from broadcast here. standpoint. All right, folks. One more bit of NFL news: the next big game in 2022 has been announced. The Rams will host the Denver Broncos on Christmas Day, 4:30 on CBS and Nickelodeon. So that's one of the three Christmas games need off two more. of the slate. Need we need two, two more, more to, get, to get done here. Before we can breathe easy here, we need we need one more or two more. That's one of the three Christmas games that has been announced as the schedule continues to kind of just trickle out. Now, before we go to break, and we are joined by Anthony Poizel, the staff writer for the Cleveland Browns. That's coming up next, his debut on He's Cleveland He's all fired Browns up. Daily. He He's is ready excited. To go We've had here. like three pre-prep meetings. He's ready to go. I'm excited about two Gibby, I'm going to leave you with a headline that is real. This is, comes from ESPN FC, which is ESPN FC. That's, that's their soccer coverage Twitter handle. Uh, and this was retweeted by Field Yates. And what Field Yates said before I read the headline to you, Field Yates says, I don't say this lightly. This is the greatest headline in the history of sports journalism. That's a bold statement, Cotton. Are you ready for the headline? Yeah. Brazilian defender Marcelo was dropped from Lyon. Due to continuous farting and laughing in the dressing room, sources have told ESPN. <laughs> it's making me laugh hard. <laughs> uh, that is unbelievable. Uh, come on, there's got to be another reason why that guy got cut. Yep. Also, a little bit of quick Browns news. Uh, Ian Rappaport on the Pat McAfee show said that uh, Jarvis Landry turned down a one-year deal, a one-year offer from the Cleveland Browns. So... I don't know if that was pre-draft, post-draft, um, but we'll that was just reported that. there uh, on the McAfee show. All right, when we come back, Anthony Poizel, Browns staff writer, next on Cleveland Browns Daily here on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
There's a lot of bad advice out there about gambling, from secret methods to picking lottery numbers to betting big when you're on a roll. These myths can lose you money and get you in a lot of trouble. So before you wager, find out what's real and what isn't at KeepItFunOhio.com. Huge moment here on Cleveland Browns big. Daily. Big moment. Hey, absolutely. With, the, uh, with our good friend Sir Andrew Gribble getting promoted into management, running all of our digital and social media, Anthony Poizel is now the writer for the Cleveland Browns, clevelandbrowns.com, the Browns mobile app. And so you're joining us on here to share not only your written word, but also your spoken word. And so we're very excited to, uh, to have you here. Let's start. before We need to introduce you to the people. Yeah. Give us your background. Let the people know where you've come from. I know you're very old already, very wise in this business. You've been doing it for a very long time. But let people know where you come from and, and you know, why they should be Team Poizel, which I am. So my hometown is from Maryland, um, but I got my start in Ohio uh, thanks to college at Ohio University. Um, uh -huh. So go Bobcats. Um, also that's following the footsteps of Sir Andrew there. Yep. Yes, that's yes. right. That's how we were able to link up. Um, so I was able to um, really see how great uh, Ohio was and eventually move up to Cleveland um, to start uh, being a freelance writer for the Browns in 2019. Um, and, you know, they kept bringing me back um, as a freelancer. And um, I was obviously, you know, the goal in mind for me was to eventually get uh, like a full time job here and um, achieved. It's been yeah, it's been it's been a full year now. Um, it's been great uh, being able to, you know, always wanting to be in here after just walking and seeing you guys doing your thing. Um, we have this this great studio here. Um, yeah, we need to get an on air light, though. You know, well. are you are you for? An official on air light, like when the mic's on, the light is automatically on. Are you for that or are you against that? I'm for it. Yeah, that's right. Well, boys, out. He gets to sorry, come back. Sorry, guys. He's been back. great, man. Thanks nope. for uh, thanks he gets for to enjoying. Come back. He gets to Good come luck back. Are you guys accepting donations for one? Like, he gets can to I, maybe you know, gives. Yeah, possible idea. A little GoFundMe give, eh? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I'll Gibbs designed the studio on purpose this way oh, without yeah. one, which is very hurtful considering that he is a long tenured radio man. It almost felt like a personal <laughs> affront uh, to me and Bo, but uh, the momentum is there. Everybody oh, yeah. wants it. Everybody knows. That's why we have, if you look behind you, we have a little P on the wall right there. That's it. Small P, because a small P producer sometimes when we don't have on air lights. But oftentimes, though, he is a huge P, and we give you a lot of credit for that, Gibbe. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. But now we've got a big W writer in the building. Again, Mr. Anthony Poizel, everybody. <laughs> Sounds like, you're like gazelle. Now, apparently there's a big beef in your family. There's like two camps on how to pronounce your name. <laughs> yeah, so one half of my family says it as Poizel, and the other half says it as Poizel. Um, I always grew up in the side of the family that said Poizel. So, um, so that's just how it's ingrained in my brain. Um, it's not a huge deal. I've had people mispronounce it in a million different ways over the years. But well, it sounds like you it. said it correctly uh, to start the I show. Tried. So I, I took a lot um, of notes. So we're off to a really good start. And <laughs> we um, are. Yeah, we and, are. and it's uh, yeah, it's Poizel. <laughs> Who, if if this ever became like a, an anchorman situation where the competing news stations had a, a brawl for supremacy, which side of the family – just on pure brawn and cunning and, and desire to prevail would win. Would the Poizels win or the Poisals win? You know, I don't want to stir up any controversy in my family around that because I know they're going to be listening to the show probably when I tell them I okay. was making my Cleveland Browns yeah. radio I'm sure this debut. is what they expected to be covered. Uh, yeah, I, I should have given them a heads up about this. <laughs> no, but um, I would – I mean, I'm biased, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Poizel side, but it's nothing uh -huh. against the Poizel side. No, uh, well, it's for me, it's nothing but pure Poizel all day long. Poizel, yeah. All right, let's talk a little about the Browns. Obviously, this is not a time of great news. We had kind of you know the off season early. We'll talk about the big trades, and then you get some free agency. Then you get into the draft, and then now it's like, all right, let's get to Friday. Let's see these rookies come in, and then we can get into the OTA phase of things, which still isn't happening right now. We're in phase two, so people are able to be out on the field. Right. But let's just start with the overall impression so far of the off season, the moves that have been made here with this team, and obviously, I think it starts with. The acquisitions of, of Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper. Yeah, I mean, everything starts with Deshaun. I mean, that was like that addresses kind of like the main thing that they wanted to improve, which was the pass game, right? Um, that was like the major That's area right. of focus Number one. That, that they talked about wanting to, to address, and they did. Um, so obviously, Deshaun brings uh, a huge arm, very accurate arm, and um, I think three straight Pro Bowls um, under, under his belt. So um, he's going to be able to just, I think – improve everything right um and i know it's not anything like mind-blowing um but you know you, when you look at the also the additions that we've made at, at wide receiver um mari cooper obviously now it looks like just getting him for a fifth round pick was a huh. huge bargain yeah um and he's gonna be able to come in instantly and be that top guy he's played with good quarterbacks his whole career and you can even make the argument that deshaun 
might be you know the best quarterback that um, that he's played with so far. So it seems like there may even be more room for Amari to go up. Um, but then you, know, you draft a guy like David Bell, who I think um, this front office is is really really high on. You just hear about um, how they speak of him uh, and what they think he can do as as a slot receiver. Um, which yeah. AB specifically mentioned when they draft him, by the way. You know, that was like not something that you normally see um, AB kind of talk about necessarily, like a specific role. When, like, uh, when we've drafted guys, he hasn't necessarily stated a specific role for them, but he did mention slot as the, as the possibility for David Bell. So I think that's something worth highlighting. Um, and he definitely has the build um, and he has the resume to kind of thrive Catches in that position um, starting instantly as a rookie. Now, obviously, he's got a, a long way to go as far as learning the offense. Uh, you know, we'll sure. see if he's in position here come week one to really kind of seize like a big role but um he's a guy for me that i, I really think this front office is going to lean on or uh, this coaching staff is going to lean on heavily um in, as a, in his rookie season so. yeah i think he's a guy who could he's one of the rookies that actually could come in and start right away in those mm -hmm. you know 11 personnel three receiver right. packages for the cleveland browns and not to mention too like donovan people's jones and anthony schwartz two guys that i think you can circle as possible like breakout year candidates and that's again not anything that's like mind-blowing but um, you know, Donovan Peoples-Jones, just remember how he looked last year in training camp, right? And then I'm he a showed big it. DPJ guy. Yeah, yeah. Huge. Couldn't uh, be bigger. Right. Love and the then, guy. And then he showed it over the course of the season. It was it was still in some flashes, but um, but he had some – put together some really good games. I think the one game he had against the Bengals stuck uh, – stuck, sticks out to me. Um, and then Anthony Schwartz, you know, uh, super fast, and he's got a big chance – he'll have a chance to take a bigger role in the offense this year. What do you think about the notion, and, and I'm with you, uh, DPJ, and I've seen him around, I've already talked to him since he's been back, incredible shape, he continues to work on all of the little things, this is a guy who averaged 21.7 yards a catch his first year, 17.6 last year for his career, on 78 targets, he's produced 901 yards, 5 touchdowns, that is a ridiculous 11.6 yards a target, he's been over 10 yards a target both years, I'd like to see more from him, I think he's got real potential, now you upgrade the quarterback position, he could, he could break out, Schwartz, you want to see it third round pick a year ago. You want to see it because that's if you would say in our room, right? The one thing that we need is still a guy to take the top off the defense. So right. you hope that that becomes Schwartz. If not, are you of the thought that the Browns might entertain, you know, looking at a Will Fuller, a Deshaun Jackson, a T.Y. Hilton, one of the veteran speed receivers that are out there still? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's plenty of great speed receivers out there and you just mentioned all of them. Um, I think. I think we'll really get to see what sort of uh, role they kind of have planned for Anthony Schwartz based on if they sign any of those guys um, moving forward. But um, I do think those guys would all bring, uh, you know, trim and I, you mentioned Will Fuller too. Um, you know, he played with Deshaun Watson. That's where yeah. that's where he that's where he thrived in Houston. And so I think that matchup or uh, that um, pairing here would make a lot of sense if we if we decide to bring in uh, a guy like Will Fuller. And um, obviously, I know he didn't get to play a whole lot last year, but you know, he's still young. He still has plenty of speed. Um, yeah. and you know automatically know that he's going to have that chemistry with Deshaun Watson if we were to bring him in here. So yeah, I, I'm sure. I think he. I think as it sits right now, he wanted to go wherever Deshaun Watson went, and it'll just be a matter of do is there mutual interest, yeah. and can they agree on the financials if if that is something that the Browns are interested. Yeah. At this point, we don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, there's spots of really good free agents out there. It feels like a lot of them are kind of playing this waiting game right now, and I feel like it's odd, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, the one guy that sticks out around here obviously is is, is Clowney, um, and just how long until you know. Is his decision comes, but is that still the number one thing on your your off season list for this Browns the off season thing to check off? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I look at you know who is out there as a free agent and where the holes still lie on this team after the draft, I mean, the biggest one obviously is is it seems like edge rusher, um, yep. and then just bringing Javon Connick back makes so much sense, right? Like he did so well with Miles last year, yeah, um, and they were just the exact kind of uh, pairing, and especially towards the end of the season, like they were the exact kind of pairing that this front office talked about. Um, when they signed him this time last off season, so I think um, it'd be great to have him back. It would be it would make the defense look um, even scarier than it did last season, even though yeah. it's not necessarily like we're it's it's any kind of like um, new addition in that way. But um, you know, you look at who we have in the secondary now, uh, and and a lot of guys going into their second years. You know, Greg Newsome. Um, you know, Grant Delpit's going to be it's playing really his a second, second year. year. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's like there's so much room for growth, and then to bring another veteran back like Clowney is just would be huge. Yeah, because all of a sudden your edge room would be, you know, Miles, Clowney, Winovich, who was very productive for right. two years there and kind of in that Tack McKinley third rusher role. And then you're allowed to bring Alex Wright along that the Browns were very happy to get. And speaking of that side of the ball, that's where we made most of our moves. We're really in in the draft. You know, we brought back Anthony Walker Jr. You think about, you know, your back seven is basically back intact. Now we've traded Troy Hill, and so we'll probably still look at adding a slot corner there. But 
you know, it's that front, and, and that's what they a- address in the draft. Alex Wright, Perion Winfrey, they signed yeah. Taven Bryan. I know you're excited about Perion. You've got to be excited I'm, about him. I'm fired up about Does Perion yeah. Winfrey content, does that draw? Does that is he a ratings draw right oh, now? Oh, yeah. I mean, you should have seen me uh, just in the auto gram room over here uh, when he was on his, his opening press conference. It, and it was a I literally part. took my earbuds off, and I was sitting with, you know, our whole content team, and I was just like, this guy is, like, incredible. Like, he's he's – like everything that like embodies Cleveland right now. And oh, yeah. um, he's got the energy, he's got the fire, and I'm really excited to see how that pans out once he hits the field. By the way, you've got like fans coming in studio to, to listen to your radio debut. Hey. Connor, MT in here. Yeah, yeah he's a go. tremendous human. Hey. Tremendous human being. He saw me in and he had to come check it he out. Had a lot, co- so. Yeah, listen, why not? Yeah. A lot. You guys should bring him in the studio sometime. You know? <laughs> he's, been, he's been in. He's been, he's been, he oh, he started, off, been in. He started off on the hot seat. I mean, he started, he could have started off in a worse position you guys didn't mispronounce his last name though right like it's, no yeah no no because no, you guys no. nail those things so we're yeah. professional professional big d broadcasters yeah. yeah no it was because i don't know do you know the story about connor so he comes in and they have him rank like everybody in the office like his favorite people or whatever mm-hmm. and he ranked me and gibbs last dead last that's a tough way to start connor it was <laughs> a tough way to start but it's 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 blossom into a beautiful friendship a mentor mentee relationship he's, that's great that's how you want it to end. he's the meal yeah. ticket in training and he's well on his way he's well on his way look at him what a guy what a human all right so anthony we're talking about the defensive side of the ball parry on everything that you want right there i go back to that slot corner i made that comment earlier mm-hmm. were you surprised by the trade of troy hill uh, after, I would say it was a little less surprising after you got Martin Emerson, right? Okay. Um, like yeah. I think he's a guy that I don't know if they necessarily envision him playing in the slot. Um, I don't think they do. Right, but but he's definitely a guy that is going to give you that kind of depth, right? Um, so once they drafted Martin Emerson, and, and then you find out the next day, obviously that they're trading Troy Hill. It's like, okay, like yeah, a little surprising that they traded a guy that still played so many snaps last year and was the slot cornerback on the team. But like, you look at the rest of the cornerback room, and they have they have the depth, they have the guys that can step up and play that position who knows maybe greg i don't know if like greg newsom is supposed to be that next guy i would up guess right now we saw um, it last which year. would be great and then yeah. obviously you feel really good about greedy after the year you had last year so you look at that cornerback room and it's like you know it, it's it's deep and you got to have to have a good defense you got to have a deep cornerback room uh, it's it's a must so um i think the martin emerson pick itself like i think that was even a little bit more surprising than than troy hill but then when you really kind of sit back and look at what they did uh and on day two and day three at the cornerback position it it makes a little bit more sense, right? Um, they're going to have Denzel for several years. They're going to have uh, Greg Newsom for several years. They're going to have Greedy for several years. And now they're going to have a guy to develop in, in Emerson that can hopefully kind of fill that role that um, or that kind of leftover depth spot that they, they had by losing Troy Hill. What I think is interesting is that, right, Troy Hill was a true nickel and was a great blitzer. He was also very good kind of in run support there. And, that you know, we don't we saw Greg do it, and I think right now that's what will happen. Greg will kick inside, but we don't have – and I wonder if there, you know, there's a free agent that they've got their eyes on, somebody that they think can come in and play that. Some of the safeties might kick down. John Johnson did some of that when he was down mm-hmm. out in uh, L.A. Yep. So maybe that's w- the direction it goes. That's what we'll have to – we'll see how ultimately how that all plays out. But, but I, the whole secondary, like you have to feel great. Loaded. Like yes. it's, it's loaded, and yes. that's like – like obviously the two core components of building a good defense is having great pass rusher, which you already have with Miles Garrett, and hopefully you know they can able e- build uh, one of the guys that they have here, like Alex Wright, into that role, or maybe you know they still make a Lennox Clowney. Um, For sure. And then you know you f- just have to feel good about what they have in the secondary, um, how loaded they are. Like whenever the injuries come up, you know that they're going to be um, well equipped, uh, well equipped to to sort of handle. Um, any sort of that injury adversity that comes up over the course of the season. Which is a good thing. Were you surprised, so you, you were surprised as I was, when MJ Emerson was the name, and now it's kind of come yeah. out in a lot of reporting that, in fact, that's kind of the Browns are looking at corners at 44 as well as receivers. And if the receivers they liked were there, they, they probably would have jumped on them, uh, but they were not. Yeah. So when you think about that, and part of it I thought, okay, it's succession playing Greece in the last year of his rookie deal. you got to have somebody to take over, but – I've been surprised. We had Matt Miller on from ESPN yesterday. Mm-hmm. He thought he was the top player on the board at that point. There's a, there are a lot of people that Emerson? are big MJ Emerson really? guys out there. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Maybe I just didn't really hear as much about him because I was focused on I did like, not the top either. three needs. Um, but, I mean, when you look at what he did uh, at Mississippi State and that the fact that he was able to be a consistent quality corner against some of the top receivers in the SEC for three shit years, like there's something yeah. to be said about that. And when you see that, it's almost kind of surprising that he wasn't as more commonly thrown around as like a name at the top of the, you know, the cornerback draft class. Um, so obviously we'll see what he can do once he goes against, um, you know, up in training camp and then over the course of his, fir- uh, of his rookie season. Um, but just coming from that kind of pedigree, that SEC pedigree, um, and all the re- d- different receivers he went up against over the years and really did a nice job of holding things down at Mississippi State. It's like, yeah, like you can see why the Browns are high on him and why they thought um, he was worthy of a third-round pick. 
Yeah, they went out there and they made that move, and, and they got him. One of the other draft picks that's getting a lot of attention, Cade York. The Browns needed to address kicker for basically, as, and you've been here for a short period of time, but since Phil Dawson, right? they wanted to get that Phil Dawson so in the building. So interesting. My first day here was when Phil Dawson had his um, retirement press conference. Okay. And that was like the first like sort of like big media thing that I covered here, and I was just like, you know, like this is like – this is cool. Like, obviously, I knew, sure. I knew a lot about Phil Dawson. He's Phil Dawson. But, like, sure. But the fact that that was, like, um, sort of, like, my first day, I think, was, like, a moment that stands out in my mind is, like, all right, that was – that happened, like, the first day that I was in, in this building. Um, and I just know a lot about how, you know, how great of a kicker he was and had been um, sort of the, the year-to-year shuffling that's been going on position since. And I know, you know, Cade York is, is supposed to be that next guy. So Yeah, and hopefully he can be. So. Yeah. Clowny, maybe a receiver, maybe a slot corner. And, and other than that, it feels like this roster is in, in pretty darn good shape right now. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you have going on kind of as we get through rookie mini camp and all of that that people can go to? Now, one thing you can go to is after the draft, you did a position-by-position position kind of review of where every position group right. stands, who's here, uh, what the status is there, which I'd recommend everybody checks out at uh, clinbrowns.com or the Browns mobile app. But what should people be looking forward for uh, coming from you? Here in the future, so we're gonna have a lot of content coming out in two days about the schedule release. Um, oh yeah, talk about all the all the top matchups. Hopefully, you know we're able to get a few primetime games um, at home. What's uh, your over under on primetime games? That's a good one. I haven't thought about that. Um, I would say like overall primetime. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put it at like three and a half. Okay. You I think, think it's that, over or under. And I think it's gonna be over. Okay, I agree. Yeah, I, like I would that. say three and a half is like the state. Like, we'll get around that range, but I think we're gonna get we're gonna get over. All right. Who's your home opener prediction? I think a great home opener would be um, would be the Chargers, because uh, you think about how good that game was last year. Like, man, you think about how good that game was last yeah, year. Yeah, like I would love to see the Chargers either at the beginning of the season or at the end of the season. Because if it's at the end of the season, like, okay, maybe there's a chance that I mean th- that game is going to have some huge playoff implications if it's at yeah. the, end of the season, right? No, I think that's a um, that's an elite game. I want to get. I'd like the home opener to be. Steelers, I feel very good about that matchup, and I, I think we need to. I'd a like Steelers home over would be insane. And we need to, we need to, we need to start the season with a victory. Um, and I think we can beat anybody on our schedule. Let me be very yeah. clear about that. The Jets are a team that I think has a lot of talent. I think, but the Jets you want to catch them early, I right. think, before they start gelling. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they've added so many good pieces. They just had a tremendous draft. I mean, a team like their three first round picks were all guys that you could have ranked at the top of uh, uh, of that position class. Um, but yeah, I think like the, so strength of schedule wise, and I'm about actually about to write this later today. Like strength of schedule, we're, we're like ranked in the middle, right? Like I think yep. we're like seventeenth. But yep. when you look at like some of the opponents that we play, it's like you know, there's a lot of these guys, or a lot of these teams that are are going to be you know, good on the come up this year. Yes. Um, and like you look at like the, the you know the Patriots, you can never count out um, Bill Belichick, and like they could probably take a step in Mac Jones' second season. Um, you just mentioned the Jets. Like there's so many teams here that I feel like all right, like they didn't have great seasons last year necessarily, but like. They just added a lot of good guys in the draft or in free agency, and like it's, it's definitely going to be tough. Like the strength of schedule sh- says we're at 17th right now, but it's yep. not. It doesn't mean we're really going to have like a you know middle of the pack hard schedule. Like it's going to be a hard schedule. It's a very hard schedule. Yeah, because every team in the AFC is good. Everybody who plays in the AFC is yep. going to have a hard schedule yep. because everybody thinks they're going to the playoffs, and yep. and only seven can. All right, one last thing so that people get a little feel for you again. Golfer. Oh yeah, love golf. Yeah, that was what a- describe your game. Um, I would say uh, good at putting and driving. I need to get better at approach. Um, Boss of the must. You yeah. need to work on your iron play. Right. Got to work on the iron play. Um, what hand- irons do you hit right now? What what brand? Uh, I am a Ping G40. A Ping. Nice. Yeah. So when you make the change, I I look at Mizuno. Look at I'm Mizuno. A big Mizuno. Is that what you have for irons? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like butter. Yeah. Um, but my handicap's at a 15 right now, and the Solid. goal the goal by the end of the summer, uh, once okay. we get some time to get out and play, and now we're finally getting some good weather here. Um, <laughs> trying to get it down, trying to get it down to below 12. So. So we shall goals see. and 11. Yeah, we shall see if that happens. It's just four shots. Um, yeah. It's in a whole round. Four shots. And the fact that, you know, I've played a couple rounds so far, putting's been there. So Okay. Um, All right, Gibbe, we're going to put that on the board. His, his goal is to get to an 11. We'll need regular updates on that. All right, and then the last Done. one. Done. Good. The last one. You've lived up here now how long? Uh, it's been uh, about one full year. One full year. Okay. In Lakewood. Favorite place to get food? Casual or upscale either? So I'm a huge um, – I had my birthday last week, actually. And Happy we went birthday. To, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we went to uh, Buckeye Beer Engine, which is a small little place in Lakewood, um, and that is like my go Fantastic burgers. Yeah. Kay. Burgers are great. Um, Buckeye I, I really, what? Buckeye Beer Engine. It's on Madison oh, Avenue. Okay. And an that is just uh, – that's my go-to spot. 
Um, I, I, I mean, I like it. The so food people is awesome. might get a Poizel sighting if they, if they're there. Yeah. On any like Friday night, Saturday, um, if there's yeah. a game on, that's like a good spot to go catch a game too. Um, okay. but that is like my, I would say that is my spot. That's and I, spot. I, the thing I like most about it, like the food is great, but I love the beer menu. I'm a huge, you're a big beer guy. Bi- yeah. Love, love, uh, the different, you know, variants of beer and everything. All right. and, What's your um, favorite beer? Uh, I'm, I mainly like, a, like a blonde guy. Um, so I like it like, but I am starting to get into IPAs a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm open there. to okay. trying everything. Okay. Give a, what's your favorite beer? Everything. That's right. That's what I figured yeah. your answer. Give and I come from the same shots. Page. I'm not a beer guy. I've said it many times. I'm not. My what dad, is, what is your be, my dad be so sad because he's such a beer guy. What's we, your go-to? Tequila. 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 I was going to say, we had a moment at the combine. I was going to say, yeah. Wine. Yeah. I remember it now. AP yeah. was responsible. We rolled right through the stop sign. We were fine. What do you mean? I was fine. We I were totally functional. Fine. Couldn't have been better. Yeah. yeah. Tequila. We go I'm from just, that to here. Yeah. Now. Beer is just beer. It, it makes I feel it makes me feel very full. Yeah. yeah. It makes me feel very full. Yeah. You can't. It's not like something you can drink if you're like also eating a meal. Like you can't have like six no. heavy beers if you're having a meal. But no, I, I have I have beer when I'm playing beer pong. And then like randomly, though, now I have every now and then I'll throw a Guinness in the mix. Guinness is good. Yeah. And it's very light. Yeah, I, li- I live 10 minutes Ironic. from the main, uh, like the only Guinness brewery that is in the U.S. Um, it is in my hometown of Elkridge, Maryland. And uh, really great place to go to. If anybody's visiting Maryland, like I don't know if anybody's traveling to go to Baltimore for a game. Highly recommend going to the Guinness brewery. How uh, far outside of Baltimore is it? 20 minutes. Oh, so wow. definitely recommend going there. They have a great outdoor area. Yeah. Um, so for anybody, I don't know how many people on the show would be looking to make a trip down to Baltimore. but I know you're a fun. youthful man, but have you ever watched The Wire? I have not seen The Wire. <laughs> not yet. Well, I know it's a shocker. This interview come was on. Going. I was hoping something like that wouldn't come it up. It was going <laughs> swimmingly. You're f- from the Baltimore area. I feel like you need to put this. That needs to be. It's I mean, at the top of my. I mean, Brown's the therapy has a graphic yeah. of him already. Of course. Like yeah. You've, you've already. Brown's therapy's got you. Well, this was this was a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. This was a lot of fun. We're going to take calls next. That's going to be a lot of fun. Anthony Poizel, staff writer. What's your Twitter handle so they can follow you? I retweet you all the time. Here it is. It's your name. At Anthony. P-O-I-S-A-L. You got it. There you go. Poizel. It would well be hard kid. to see. Hey, you did a great job. You'll well be done. back. Great yeah. to be on. Looking You'll be back. To the next You'll time. be back. Yeah. Especially you st- once you, st- you had me at On Air Life, but you did tremendous. Awesome. All right. Phone calls are next. 216 578 0850. Buckle up, Gibbe. Hour number two. Cleveland Browns Daily coming up on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Browns fan Sugardale sponsoring a grand opening event at the newest Meyer location. Visit the Brunswick store Friday, May 13th for samples and giveaways and special appearances by Browns alumni and chomps. For store location more details, visit Sugardale.com slash events. So give it. Let's do it. Open up the phone lines. Don't forget, bottom of the hour, Jake Burns joins us from the Orange and Brown Report and the Orange and Brown Film Breakdown to talk about the offseason acquisitions, what this Browns team should look like. But now we've got traveling music, and we've got give it. Well, real quick, do you want to hear from Rap Sheet talking about Jarvis Landry? Yeah, because I Pat mentioned McAfee it. Show. Yeah, let's put let's let, let's put put that out in the mix real quick. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> all good, fellas. One second. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Give yeah, it. The way you said that, I, 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 I thought almost thought we, you could press the button. We, <laughs> we are good to go. Here we are. All right, here we go. Jarvis Landry, allegedly the Baltimore Ravens are interested. I assume a lot of teams are interested in Jarvis Landry. Am I wrong in reading this? Why am I reading this wrong? And why is he not a Colt? <laughs> Welcome to the Colts, Jarvis Landry. Um, <laughs> you're you're not wrong. And I think a lot of people are interested. Um, as always, money is the issue. And if you look historically at this time of year, the amount of players who've got, let's say, more than $10 million, you can count them on one hand. Like, it's cr- like Clowney did one year, that was one, but there's like Almost no players get more than, like, say, $10 million, which you know, like, had Jarvis Landry, remember he visited the, the Falcons, we all thought that Deshaun Watson was going to go there, like, that probably would have been about a $10 million deal. I don't know where he gets that now. And, you know, I know the Browns are offering him a pretty nice one-year deal where it would have been a pay cut, but he would have gone back there for a nice sum, turned that down, and now it's like, you say, I would say the same thing for... Um, you know, same thing for anyone who gets who gets released this time of year. Like it is not a lot of money out there. Teams are mostly spent. So that's an update on Jarvis Landry there, and and it's right. You, you know that. Look, it, it, this is a tougher time. Do I wish Jarvis Landry were a Cleveland Brown? You know I do. I love Jarvis same. Landry, and, and it's unfortunate that it hasn't worked out. I'm guessing the time frame he's talking about was prior to the draft. Uh, now that the Browns have David Bell in the mix and. I certainly would want my preference to be Jarvis NFC, get as much money as you can, hopefully somewhere in the NFC, play for you know Green Bay Green somewhere Bay. yeah, where yeah. you can go chase a championship because I love that man. I love him. I love him. I love him. All right. Agreed. I love taking your phone calls. We're going to do it. 216-578-0850. Give it. There we there go. There it is. Travel music's back. I threw Paulus a curveball. You did. You threw I everybody did. a curveball, but that's okay. I liked it. Uh, let's start things off. Jim, welcome to Cleveland Browns Daily with Nathan Zagura. Fellas, man, I miss talking to you guys. Jim, it's a pleasure. How are you doing, brother? You know what? I'm hanging in there. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about Baker, but first, why did why does Bo hate the fans? He hates talking to us. <laughs> he Not doesn't hate no. the fans. He loves the fans. He brings good takes. I mean, I mean, I, I guess he's. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't like – he doesn't tolerate phone calls. I don't know. He's not a big phone call but, guy, uh, but he's a tremendous human. Loves the fans. Loves everybody. Uh, I love the stories about his kids, man. They're uh, hilarious. Bootsy, legend. Yep. I can only now, imagine what's going on the come... last five days with Bootsy. Oh, my God. Running amok out there. It's got to be great. Pure joy. All right, Jim, what do you got for when, us? When it comes to Baker, okay. am I mistaken? If, if we hold on to him, we get a compensatory pick of a third round. So why would we cut him with, and, and let's, I, I'm holding on to him, and the least I'm going to take is a third-round pick. So two things. Number one, number one, it's not guaranteed that you would get a third-round pick. So the compensatory picks are based on what co- the salary range that he signs for somewhere else, right? So And then they cross out. So let's say Baker signs, we'll call it a, a $15 million a year deal somewhere else this offseason and the Browns signed a free agent who would also make $15 million, they would cross each other out, so you wouldn't get a compensatory pick. So it's not a guarantee that you would get a compensatory pick. It's likely that you would get a compensatory pick at some level, though, as a result of Baker Mayfield departing in free agency. It's not a lock, though. So that's one thing. Two, though, to your point, releasing him would get you somebody would sign him for the league minimum because he's getting that money guaranteed and that's the only part of it that would offset for the browns so releasing him the browns would be saving very little money my guess is that they will trade him at a point when they think it makes the most sense for them 
or if not, I would think that they would hold on to him. Now, I, I don't believe he would be a factor. I've seen people kind of write, well, what would Baker, you know, if Deshaun gets suspended, would Baker – no, Jacoby Brissett is the backup quarterback. I think Baker playing for the Browns, that ship has sailed, I think, on, on both sides of things. And so for everybody, I think, like I've said all along, Baker Mayfield, without question, in my mind, is one of the 32 best quarterbacks on planet Earth. He should be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Will he get that opportunity this year? I don't know. I hope he does, and I hope it happens swiftly for him and for the Browns. Jim, appreciate the phone call. We yep. go to Kyle on the phone. Kyle, you're on Cleveland Browns Daily with one Nathan Zagura. And you too, Kim, eh? It's all me. Good afternoon, gents. How are we? Good. How, How are you doing, doing, Kyle? Doing good, doing good. I want to say, first off, it's an honor to hear my voice betwixt the great uh... D. Bravo. Bravo. Well played, Kyle. Gets us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, first off, did you ask the great Jim Donovan what he thinks of Betwixt? So, we didn't get there yesterday, but I noticed that in the middle of the segment when we had a caller and somebody else uh, like you dropped a Betwixt, and I was giving Gibby crap about it. I watched that clip back. Actually, Donovan's grinning ear to ear, so I think he's a big Betwixt man, which wouldn't surprise me, a man of his vocabulary his power his intellect <laughs> there's no doubt he's a betwixt guy good to hear um it is. so you guys talked about liking magic have you seen dr strange tomorrow night no spoilers please tomorrow night with the kids we are fired up the multiverse we're ready to go got the whatever xd true d whatever theater where this has been weeks in the making yes we are very excited to go was it what's your give it without no spoilers your review. Give it a grade. I think I think he hung up. He's out? Yeah. He's gone. A plus. It was magic. You gotta let me have a little back and forth here with the with the people here. That's I, on me. I, That's on me, guys. That's possible. Okay. We'll let it go. Don't worry about it. You were thrown off at the beginning. My we don't we don't I'll give do you this my off. review. All right, you Paul, yeah, what's your review? Uh, it's like a B. B plus. A maybe. B, B plus? Yeah. Okay. It, it's a good movie. It's not I probably like the first Doctor Strange more, but it had some amazing moments in it. So Okay. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Is there any? I've I've been warned that there might be some sadness. I don't want any sadness. I want all pure joy. It, I mean, it is a lot of. It, have you ever seen? It's Sam Raimi, so it's Evil Deadish, very um, old school, uh, old school horror sort of aspects with it. Oh boy! It's kind of creepy. It's it's it has some fun, but not a lot of fun with it. Okay. Very. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little dark. Of like the recent Marvel movies, what's your favorite? Uh, and you know what? I'm not a huge Spider-Man person, but No Way Home was fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, it was. yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, uh, and I like No Way Home way more than I like this one, but this one definitely had its moments. Yeah, I'm a, I was a big No Way Home guy. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Okay, next. I I don't think we have any more calls. That's it. That's it right now. The, the yeah. Segment. The segment came wow. to an abrupt halt. Two one six five seven eight zero eight fifty. Come on, call oh in. Oh my goodness, Gibbe. That's a, how I, insulting. All I, right. I don't know. I got. Well, nothing. why don't we take? We'll, we'll catch up on our breaks. Take a break right here. We'll give people a chance to get back on there, and then if and then we'll get to a Jake Burns at the bottom of the hour. All right, we can do that. Two one six five seven eight zero eight fifty. This is rare, so if you want to do it, let's do it. Clean Browns Daily, eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.
Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO for your free case review. Elk and Elk is a proud partner of the Cleveland Browns. Nathan Zagura, Gibbs with you. Cleveland Browns Daily, back to the phones again. Special phone segment, and Jake Burns joins us at 2.30, the bottom of this hour. So we got 10 minutes here. Let's get to it, 216-578-0850. All right. Uh, I believe Daniel. Nick, is Daniel still there? Yep, he's up. Daniel, you're on Cleveland Browns Daily with Nathan Zagura. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you doing, Daniel? I was born and raised in Medina, Ohio. Been a Browns fan for well over 50 years. And awesome. been in Naples, Florida for 14 years. Because you're, oh, you're smart. Because you're, you're a smart man. Very smart. Because I listen to you guys every day. Appreciate and it. And I hear about you guys can't even get around to golf in. I know. And you're just down there in Naples so, just gulping from the fountain of life chill. and all the beautiful sun. He probably has to golf before noon because yeah. it's like 95 it's too by hot. 12. Yeah, o'clock. sure, sure, sure. What no, a treat. It, 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 really, it really doesn't bother you. Of course not. But, hey, I wanted you. to tell you guys, I appreciate listening to you every day. And I Thank don't you. miss one segment. Thank you very and much. You guys keep me. You guys keep me in touch with my beloved Browns, and I just want to thank you so much. That's all I want. Well, Daniel, thank you very much. We appreciate that that so much. Yeah, a little positivity here on a Tuesday, Gibby. How about that? I like it. That was very nice, very kind. Back to the phones. By the way, the the west coast of Florida, Uh, highly underrated. Naples, 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 Fort Myers. Oh, man. Sarasota. Oh, Nice Sarasota. little places. Yeah, great nice, places. Nice little places. There. You're not lying. Uh, speaking of another nice place, one of my favorite areas to go up to, Marblehead and uh, uh, Sandusky all the way up there, up into the islands. John in Port Clinton. John, oh, you're yeah. on Cleveland Browns Daily. Hey, welcome, gentlemen. I tell you, um, I appreciate the opportunity to get on. It's, it's not easy to get on this uh station when there's call-ins but i appreciate the little gap so nathan this is directed to you yes sir um i i personally have been a play-by-play and color commentator for 40 years in high school and small college football so i'm really happy for you i think that i think that um the dynamic that you're going to have with jim should be exceptional as you tell the story so my question is i grew up listening to all the legends and i patterned my way of doing it, mainly based on how the end user, the person listening on the radio, could imagine and picture what was going on. But for you, who do you look at towards kind of like, all right, this is my baseline approach to this, or um, these are the things I want to make sure I can do well, and these are the things I want to maybe make sure that I, I, I don't go go towards realizing that you've got a major audience. Yeah, well, thank you very much for the the question, and congrats on your career. I'd say so I grew up you know, Bill King, Lon Simmons, obviously was a huge John Madden guy, uh, and, and Pat Summerall. But, you know, my kind of approach to it is, is twofold. Number one, you know, it's Jim's show. It, it's <laughs> the play, radio is the play-by-play guy show, and Jim Donovan, we are blessed to have, I think, the best play-by-play guy in the league here. So in terms of what I want, what I hope to bring to it is some perspective that I'm able to gain from the players, from the coaches themselves, some of that background a story, some of the numbers behind the game, uh, and just kind of be able to talk about some of the strategies we're going to employ on a week-to-week basis, on a matchup-to-matchup basis. What I want to not do is talk too much, talk too loud, and I don't ever, 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 ever want to talk over one of his big calls or do anything like that because we play examples of that happening all the time on the show, and it is brutal. And so I definitely do not want to do that. I will try to wait for – him to go through his big call and if he looks to me and has a little pause then maybe I can jump in and say something and get excited but you know my plan is just to bring emotion uh to bring passion to bring information and then to to sit back and let the maestro do his thing and I think Gibby will Gibby will like that philosophy I I like that philosophy quite a bit (laughs) and I will strive to do it (laughs) in practice there you go back to the phones one more time Morte uh Morte you're on with Nathan Zagura I like it. Hey, hey, how you doing? Good, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm calling from Columbus. Uh, I just had a question for you guys about the, the Browns uh, yep. uh, drafting. Um, I think there's certain teams in the NFL that, you know, do a good job at drafting certain positions. Like Pittsfield, you know, they, they draft. Wide they receivers. do pretty good at wide receivers. Yep. What would you say 
has been the biggest success for the for the Browns in, in drafting players? That's a good question. As far as position. That is a good question, and it's one that I think is in some ways it's tough because we've had so many different people drafting them that we haven't had that stability where you're able to get into a good groove. But I, I think that, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, and my answer would initially probably be uh, cornerback. And I'm just going, and, and I'm trying to think of our early draft picks at cornerback. Joe Hayden turned out, obviously, a great pro still in the league today. Um, I would say that, and then now most recently, you know, Denzel Ward, and you've had Greg Newsom. In the, those are the three first-rounders that I can think of off of the top of my head. Uh, I think Greedy has been solid for we, you. We, we developed Buster Screen. Developed Buster for, Screen. For better or for worse, the guy's had a good career. K1 Williams. Yeah. K1 Williams still in the league yeah. since then, too, which was 2014. So I think we've done a good job identifying corns. Pierre Desir, who we drafted, ended up have, making a lot of money in the league with yes, the Indianapolis did. Colts and with the Jets. Um, so that's a position I think, generally speaking, uh, the Browns have done a pretty good job of drafting. And then the other, you'd have to say the offensive line, right? I mean, you think about people who were actual Cleveland Browns draft picks. Joe Thomas was a draft pick. Mitchell Schwartz was a draft pick. Uh, Alex Mack was a draft pick. Um, Joel Batonio was a draft pick. So those are all guys that were that's, – that's pretty good. Just, you know, you think about the last – two decades and being able to have that there but I think that's pretty good so and I would also say this front office does a good job and front offices in the past have done a good job of finding good corners and making them even better in, in the system I mean think about TJ Carey Money Mitch, like yep, bringing in guys in free agency yep. that they have found MJ that, Stewart that we didn't know about yeah and they brought him in and I mean, they became mainstays on yeah. this defense. Yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job in the defensive backfield. Really, if, if, if there is one area that I'd say had been the best for us in my entire time being here, offensive line and defensive backfield have probably been the best. You know, Miles Garrett was certainly a, a one-of-one one type of a player and a pick, and so that one's turned out to be pretty easy. But, I mean, I would say that our track record overall of, you know, drafting along the defensive line, maybe not as great as we would like it to be. We've had some good players. Ogan Joby. Ogan Joby. Emmanuel Agba turned out to be a darn good player and a guy that Just, we wish that we still had here yeah. without question uh, to be that big end opposite Miles Garrett. So, you know, I, I think corner, that's a good question. I like that one. That was that was a fun one. Um, the cornerback position would probably be my answer there, and especially recently. I think we've done a good job. And if, if this guy, MJ Emerson, can come in and be a player as well, that'll be great for the Browns. When we come back, Jake Burns will join us talking about the offseason and what could look different for this Cleveland Browns team. Also, a little NFL news, though, to take you into the break. We talked about how the Browns, you know, Clowney is the guy, obviously, that they're looking to bring back. But another person that they said they were talking to potentially was, uh, you know, Jerry Hughes is a veteran option. Well, he has just signed with the Texans the Houston Texans so you can cross his name off according to Jordan Jordan Schultz from the Schultz report uh Hughes is signing with the Texans um a return home for Hughes a Houston native who starred at TCU so Clowney really is the final rural starting caliber option out there at defensive end for the Browns and one that a lot of people thought kind of would ultimately make it happen when it was all said and done Jake Burns up next here Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Rumkey Waste and Recycling is a family-owned and operated company. Whether you join them as a customer or as an employee, you'll become a part of the family. Visit rumkey.com to learn more. To the hotline we go once again. We welcome in Jake Burns from the Orange and Brown Report and the Orange and Brown Film Breakdown. You can follow him on Twitter at Jake underscore Burns 18. What's up, Jake? Hey, what's happening? Thanks for having me, man. Of course, man. All right, where are you right now? With this Browns roster following the offseason, the draft, where are you right now, and what, what do you still want to see happen? Yeah, I, th- I think it's obviously a very good roster. I think that, that we all are hoping for a couple different things still to happen, too, right? Like, I think Jadevin Clowney is still a wildly important player for them and what they like to do as a strong side defensive end and how they use that position to sort of filter their run defense into their pass defense and if they can get him back, I think that's a home run for both sides. So getting him back would be nice. But you do have some pieces there you like with Alex Wright and, and uh, Chase Winovich and Weatherly and a lot of different names that they've brought in to try to offset some of that stuff. So we'll see if they can get Clowney back. We all think that that would be great for everybody. Yep. Uh, but, but, you know, up front in the interior, I think they're going to allow guys to prove themselves. they got the young guys that drafted – a defensive tackle now in, what, three straight years in middle rounds. So there might be a veteran at play there. We'll see. But for the most part, they seem to want to let these young guys prove themselves. So the defensive line, a couple things that we would maybe like to see, uh, you know, some some spots added. But linebacker and corner, we know with the draft, with how they snagged Martin Emerson, I'm sure we'll talk about, and the safety group and running that back. They're, they're pretty set there. And then on offense, I, I think that the only position people have a lot of questions about is wide receiver. But yeah, I, I think that as we continue to, to get toward the regular season, we're going to see that there's actually quite a bit of wide receiver talent already here, and, and they think these guys are going to be pretty good, what they've brought in, both drafted and undrafted free agents, and and uh, allowing some of these things to organically improve through a new quarterback, too. So I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a really good football team and that they can continue to add a couple little pieces when they unlock a little more salary cap and in uh, in june with with austin hooper's situation on june 1st and they'll they'll probably add some more talent to it all right jake you mentioned there's some organic improvement due to the quarterback and i know you are a man of film i was watching a couple hours worth of deshaun film a couple of weeks ago getting ready for a segment uh, some things we're going to do here at the browns on that getting into the film room talking about deshaun watson i was blown away i mean i knew he was good but it's not like i'm out there watching much houston texans tape What are your impressions of him? What does he do well? And what is that going to mean for this offense and Kevin Stefanski? Yeah, it's, it's, I think, I think what I can tell you is he's really good, but I think you can, you can learn this on on your own. I mean, you can watch the latest, uh, Nathan, I'm sure you did too, like the building the Browns and just the way these guys are talking about their offense. It's just, they feel like it's going to be a, a really big change. So I've tried to consume every single snap he's had, you know, back then when he came out of, Clemson I was a believer then and it didn't it just didn't work out and that's how the NFL goes sometimes you get a guy and sometimes you don't but I have not paid like as close attention as you would like to pay attention to a guy I know Deshaun's a very good hyper talented quarterback and there's no doubt about that on the football field he's a heck of a player and and but I haven't broke it down like you'd you'd like to like it was a guy in orange and brown so I went back and tried to consume every single snap he's had in the NFL I'm going to put together in June like a little four-part series about what I think he does really well but to wrap it up, I mean, he does the things you want a guy to do well in modern football, right? He can make plays uh, within structure, and he can make plays outside of structure. So in, as far as the in-structure stuff goes, he's on time. He's he's uh, he's very sharp, both pre-snap and post-snap, about where he's going with the football and what the defense is telling him is going to happen for him. You know, there's some really nice interviews that he has done in post-game scenarios where he has gone through and – almost photographic memory told you what happened and why it happened and why he made the decision that he made. And, you know, here's the concept of cover six and here's how it works. And here's why I did this. And he's, he's done that stuff. So he's a very sharp pre-snap to post-snap player who can yeah. make plays within a scheme that gives him an answer, you know, Hey, if this come off the play action, fake three-step drop. I got this corner out against cover two. I'm going to hit this. He can do that stuff. And he's accurate. The ball's out on time. He can do that, but he can also, extend plays and make plays outside of structure and I know that's something we've all been craving a little bit for a while is a guy who can can make plays when the defense takes it away and make that that concept of there's uh there's scheme recreators which are guys who are just going to recreate what you put on a, on, a, on a on a whiteboard and do exactly what the defense gives them but then there's guys that when the defense takes away that corner out against cover two or takes away your cover four beater or takes away 
you know, the, the team doesn't get a chance to develop and somebody pressures the quarterback too quickly, he can get out of those situations yeah. and obviously be, be unique. And, and, and we know there's, there's a handful of guys in the NFL who can do this stuff. He's one of them. And I think you're going to see a, a night and day difference between, like, being able to recreate and create. And that's just a, a completely different element. That's how drives continue. The third yeah. down and eight, that's how you get those first downs. Every little thing you need a quarterback to do on the field, he's going to be able to do that stuff. And uh, obviously is, is earning the respect of people in you know, the Browns organization really quickly uh, with, with all of this. So they're, they're excited, and I think for you know the fans should be excited too about really good quarterback play that's coming. When you see a guy who's completed a higher percentage of his passes than any quarterback in the history of the league who's you know thrown 1,500 or more attempts in the NFL – what does that mean for an offense? And I know some of it means you're extending drives, but for when a guy can actually put the ball where it needs to be for the receivers in stride, what does that mean and what does that do for Kevin Svansky as a play caller knowing that you've got a guy who can really pinpoint the football? Well, I think for Kevin it means he doesn't have to be perfect. Your margin for error is larger. Like what I mean by that, and you're, you're spot on. Like he can – if the, and Kevin does this often. And, and, again, like, you know, Baker is – Baker Mayfield had some nice – uh, moments in Cleveland too, but just when things went wrong, the inconsistency stuff, like if the scheme allows something simple, Deshaun will do that. He can handle the simple. He can handle the throw in the, you know, the stick route against cover three and the, and the curl flat doesn't get there. He can do that stuff. He can keep you on schedule and keep you out of third and long. That's what we're talking about. You know, putting the ball where it needs to be to create an opportunity to run after catch, right? or understanding the patience it takes for a scheme to develop without rolling out of the, uh, out of a pocket. Like he can do all of those things on time. And then also is able to like, like I was trying to say earlier, what this does for an offensive coordinator is, Hey man, we called a cover two beater against cover four. And that just didn't work out the way we expected it to, but Oh, he got out of the pocket or he shook off a player who got a pressure on him, stepped up and delivered the football to a tight end in a window. We weren't expecting the football to get to It's just, it makes everybody's life easier. It makes your wide yep. receiver's life easier. And we talked to this offseason, we talked a little bit to, uh, to to Cecil Shorts about this because he'd been down in Houston and around the scenario. And like, it makes your wide receivers more engaged every single second they're on the field. Hey, I ran my hook route here, but that doesn't mean that just because I didn't get it, it doesn't mean I, did, I can't get it on a scramble. Or I'm the third option on this play, but that doesn't mean the rock's not coming to me if it unfolds a certain way. That part of it keeps you locked in. Your offensive line margin for error is wider because they can, even if they somehow miss a block, and we know that's not all too common with this group, but if they blow a protection or somebody gives up a quick pressure, you can get out of it. And, right, your running backs become more engaged in the passing game too because if it's not a screen pass or a handoff, they could still get it as a late check down swing route or flat route or something. So I think the thing that you will use is the game of football for the Browns offense from Kevin through everybody on the field, it just becomes a little bit easier. And it just becomes easier because a quarterback can do all of those things that NFL defenses try to do to make it harder. He can keep you on schedule, can keep everybody engaged, and make those plays that are so rare that you're like, holy cow. So that that's my biggest – I've tried to tell this to people this offseason. Like, yeah. you've maybe watched other offenses in the NFL play, and you're like, man, they, they make it look so easy – there are going to be times where as a Browns supporter, you're going to watch the Browns offense and be like, oh, I get that now. I understand it because he can do those things. Talk with Jake Burns from the Orange and Brown Report in the Orange and Brown film Breakdown. Talk a lot about Deshaun Watson there, one of the receivers we brought in. And I expect this team, Jake, and, and you can tell me if you agree or not, I think we're going to play a lot more 11 personnel this year because it, it suits the talents that we've got now. And Amari Cooper is going to be that receiver for us. We've got you know David Bell drafted now. DPJ looking to take a step, and I think he's been very efficient in his first two years, and you know, you hope we get a, a step from Schwartz, but and, and now Cheap is the tight end. How do you see kind of these guys, and I'll, we'll talk Amari Cooper specifically, you know, fitting in here, and, and do you think this is going to be a passing game that really could be exciting to watch? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that what you'll notice is that the offense will look a lot different, and what I tell people when I say this is I'm going to try to get to this in July is kind of the difference and what the offense will look like is, you know, a lot of these guys of the quarterback collective group, the Shanahan McVeighs and the branches that come off of that are really, their offense is meant to make offensive football easier for, for quarterbacks. And sometimes though, a good example of this is Matt LaFleur, what he was able to do going from Tennessee, where he was, he went from San Francisco to Tennessee 
uh, obviously, actually, uh, I apologize. He went from L.A. to Tennessee as the offense coordinator. Then he went to Green Bay, and he get Aaron Rodgers, yep. and his offense is different. He does different things for him because that's what Aaron is comfortable with. Like the Browns, I presume, will be running a lot of RPOs and different things that Deshaun is really hyper-efficient with. And with that becomes we need different wide receivers that can do different things. So, like, we have Donovan Peoples-Jones, who we think can play X and can play Z, can play an X vertical route tree route runner. We've seen him do it. We know that we love the Amari Cooper situation because Amari is so efficient in every role. He can play Z off the ball, be your motion guy, and do different things. He can be your slot guy. He's got experience in three-by-one formations, doing different things out of the slot, the in-and-out go that makes him so tough to cover. He's just so precise. We can also put him in X if we need to. We had David Bell, who we think could be an outside-inside guy, but they referenced this fact that he can be a power slot yep. as a bigger 6-1 body. And, like, he's a body clone to Amari Cooper, so you can see how the fit there is so good for them. And then, yes, David and Harrison, your two tight ends. I think the uptick you will see is 12 personnel will be a bit more popular for them. They will use some 11 and obviously get Anthony Schwartz. And, you know, people forget Jakeem Grant's got some experience being on the field as yep. a wide receiver, a couple 300-yard seasons. He can do it. And, again – Michael Woods, talented player, can do some things after the catch. They like them. And then they, I tell you, keep your eye on a couple of these UDFAs who, who could be some nice fits as well as some guys who get a chance to, to showcase some things. But what they want is we want to get some diversity in the types of guys and the movement we can do. You know, if it, We don't want a guy who can only be on the field in 11 personnel or a guy who can only be on the field in 12. They're trying to do some different things. But to your general question and point, I think we see less 13 personnel, as we all can agree. Yep. The third tight end is a little murky right now in terms of who that will be. I'm sure they'll find a talented answer there. But I think what they want to do is get more speed and more explosives is what they call you know, big right. plays, shot plays down the field. So in my opinion, it does mean an 11 and 12 personnel uptick, more more athletes, and really it's all on the table for David to have such a big year in Joku. Like it's all yeah. in front of him, and I think a, a quarterback who has made tight ends really good in his time as a quarterback in Deshaun. So that, that pairing should be a lot of fun to watch. I was just going to ask you about Chief. I, I'm expecting a monster season from him as well. He is so talented. He is going to be, I think, with Deshaun Watson, you see some of the seam balls that Deshaun's thrown in his career and what former Brian you know, Fells did so well down there with him. It just feels like everything is aligned. They loved how much he improved as a blocker, that he's going to get his opportunity to be you know, a guy of, of real consequence as a pass catching and really a complete tight end. Absolutely. And then you're going to get like, I think David has always had to work for his yards, throws that are longer downfield or concepts that mean he had to get separate. I think they're going to be a lot of cheap yards for him. There's going to be a lot of, you know, RPO slide flat concepts where he's in the wing position and they're going to run a little inside zone action and work that outside linebacker. And if you cheat inside, because God forbid you don't cheat inside a little bit to help the run game yeah. with Nick and Kareem, you're going to slide that tight end of the flat and that, go back and watch. David Fell, or, uh, you know, um, uh, Fells, the, the opportunity that he got, um, all these opportunities for the tight ends because you're just so keyed in on, okay, well, they got the speed guys at wide receiver. We've got to make sure we take care of those. Got to make sure we take care of our run fit in the run game. Oh, man, now they just took that tight end and sliced, locked him across and snuck him out. Like, I think David will really benefit from cheap yards that turn a season that's 400 yards into 800 yards because he goes from, like, 50 opportunities to 85 90 opportunities and that's just because teams have to hold themselves accountable for all 11 players on the field that's what makes the modern quarterback the Mahomes the the Josh Allens these guys and Joe Burrow to an extent and Justin Herbert is they can move a little bit and you have to yep. respect the leg a little bit and what that does is it becomes harder for certain guys in, in hybrid positions curl flat or hook defenders to sit, to get there really quickly because, you know, again, what's unique in Cleveland is that you got these two running backs in the backfield who, if you don't honor them, they're going to kill you. We, we you know, even a lot have of three of them. Me, like, yeah, I would agree with that totally. And then the rookie's a nice player, too. So you start to say, well, okay, can they run from the gun? Yeah, go back and watch 2019 when they ran from the gun a ton with Freddie Kitchens and watch Nick handle that. Nick, is, Nick and yeah. Kareem are so good, they can do any of it. So if you give them, if you don't put the, the right run fit situation together, you're going to get gashed that way. You start to take that away. You start to see the RPO play action game come together, and you sit back and think about that as an offensive coordinator. It's just an endless amount of opportunities that you, you really just haven't had, and that's why you feel good about the quarterback situation and what it can do to unlock everybody else. 
I just can't wait to see this team play some games. We've got a long way to go for that. But, Jake, certainly looking forward to your breakdown uh, of this offense. And Deshaun Watson, you said, coming out in June. You can follow him on Twitter at Jake underscore Burns 18. We will have to do this again soon, Jake, because we didn't even get onto the defensive side of the ball, and there's a lot to talk about there as well. Uh, but really appreciate the time and the knowledge as always. You're somebody who absolutely puts in the work, watches the tape, and, and people, I urge you to check out his stuff as a part of the Orange and Brown film breakdown. Again, at Jake underscore Burns 18. Thanks, Jake. My pleasure, guys. Anytime. Thank you again. All right, still so much more to come here as we wrap it up on a Tuesday. Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland. All right, welcome back in here to Cleveland Browns Daily. About to wrap it up and and give a we're gonna wrap it up on some uh, some happy news today. Oh yeah, we are earlier this morning. We welcomed into the world Gabriella Costanzo. So congratulations oh, to Justin J-Man. and Tammy on their beautiful yes. beautiful baby girl. Welcomed into the world, and I mom is doing doing well. I think it was a, a quite a process as it always is and uh they were able to welcome in this hey, that's beautiful awesome. beautiful daughter i cannot wait to meet her so to tammy and to justin and gabriella congratulations we love you the newest member of the fof is here oh, so the kid has no idea what's coming oh man it's gonna be 
it's uh, pure joy, I think, for that kid and, and certainly for them. So, so happy. One minute. These one are the minute. things that these are the things that, you know, it's the circle. It's a beautiful thing. So congratulations yeah. to the Costanzos. We cannot wait to meet you, Gabriella. The newest Browns fan is here, folks. Daddy's little girl. Daddy's little girl. Oh, there's I mean, I know what's coming there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing better. Yep. Bo makes his return tomorrow. Oh, really? The band is back together tomorrow. So that'll be a lot of fun. Any anything else to tease, Gibbe? Working through it. Might, through might it. end up uh, with a few players, maybe a few huh? coaches. Oh, in maybe uh, of Friday's maybe the mullet. May the mullet might make an appearance. Oh, baby. All right. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Thanks for all the great calls. Thanks to Jake Burns. Thanks to Anthony Poizel, the Brown staff writer, for stopping by. And, of course, for the great Gibbe, Nick Paulus, getting it done for us. The next level is next. Thanks for listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on ESPN Cleveland, 850 WKNR.